an excruciating loss. I mean, Anthony Davis, who played brilliantly, falling into the nugget bench as that shot goes in for Jamal Murray. That's, that's got to be just awful. And as we discussed earlier, for those of us just joining us here at the top of a new hour, the Lakers did everything we said they needed to do last night. They got way out in front. They got a big performance from D'Angelo Russell. Anthony Davis was 32 points. He was active and he was involved. LeBron James was brilliant. And they still couldn't find a way to get the win. The only thing missing was closing jump shots because they, they missed some. Rui Hachimura missed a good one, Austin Reeves, and then, of course, LeBron with that wide open look. You're not going to fault guys for missing shots, but against a team as good as Denver, that's your margin for error. So small, yeah. the, you have to capitalize on those moments. When they didn't, you're now putting the ball in the hands of a team that, for me, represents the greatest certainty there is in the league in late game in terms of you know this is going to be a quality possession and Jamal Murray made sure that he made the shot that the Lakers were unfortunately unable to. To that point, 26 clutch victories this season for the Nuggets. They're the second most behind the Bulls. Do what you want with the Bulls having that many games. But this is a team that's very comfortable when ball games get tight. For as good as the Lakers have been as of late, the Nuggets, are, they do what they do. Well, they're a championship team. They're the best team in the league. They have the best player in the league. So all those things, and I said that decidedly, despite the fact that they didn't have the best record. And, Jay, well, let's talk about the 20-point lead that didn't last. Yeah. At the end of the day, the Lakers don't just lose that game in the final 13 seconds. They lose that game because they have a 20-point lead in the third quarter. How did it get away? Well, well the, the biggest headline for me, Greeny, was the fact that 20-point lead in the third quarter with an offense that was working with LeBron James and AD and pick and roll. There are no excuses. We can sit up here all day long and talk about missed calls in the third quarter. We could talk about defensive adjustments by Darvin Ham that he should have made. We could talk about whether they should have double teamed Jokic down at the bottom, you know, on, on the block in the fourth quarter late. A 20 point lead on the road as an underdog in a must win scenario. You got to win that game. That, that is flat, plain, and simple for me. That's easy. So if you have to pick one reason, I'm asking you to put your finger on one not reason they didn't. What is it? I, don't, I, I think they ran out of steam. I think it's a team that's with LeBron James at 39 years old with the physicality, like I said in the first hour. The fact that the last nine, ten possessions after every main bucket, they pushed the tempo of the game. They eventually got into the legs of the Lakers. And you saw that spell in the third quarter when LeBron James went, went dry, Anthony Davis didn't score a point in the fourth quarter. It comes down to the fact that their two most physically imposing players were worn down when you needed them the most. I agree. And look, here's, here's the deal. The Denver Nuggets went to something and they were going to see how Lakers were going to play it. And they decided to go ahead and roll the dice while Jokic just erased this deficit, basically single-handedly in the post with what he was doing. And I understand the mentality um, of not wanting to give up three-point shots, like wide-open looks to, to role players or auxiliary players. I get that. I know for me, as a head coach, I am not letting one guy cook me yes. over and over and over. I just can't live with that. He, he, he was getting whatever he wanted at some point. There, during a timeout, there has to be a change up where you say, we're going to run at him on this possession. Let's see what happens. Maybe we can rotate out of it and force a tough contested three. It was a, a late night game. So for those of you on the East Coast who maybe didn't see it, what they're talking about is that they went, they were single covering Jokic pretty much the entire second half. And as great a player as Anthony Davis is, and he had a magnificent night in most ways last night, it did seem like he got worn down. He had 32 points in the first three. 32 minutes, Monica, none after that, and Jokic did have his way. That's the nature of the beast, though. Like, you're not going to get a win over the Denver Nuggets without exerting all of your energy, right? And I don't disagree with these guys that it would have been nice to see something different. I just think this conversation is more about the Nuggets than it is about the Lakers. We look across the league. I've been witness to two in front of the Knicks. 20 points mean nothing in the league across the league this season. And then you're talking about the defending champs? That really means even less. And so, I agree. There could have been some wrinkles thrown at this team defensively, but ultimately, to me, this is more about the Nuggets than the Lakers. But I think it comes down to also, I mean, let's just be honest about it. Like, it, it, it's about matchups and it's about details. So, yes, 20 point leads can be erased quickly, but it's some of those details and the execution of those details down the stretch, which is you're always going to question about the Lakers. It's about, you know, it's not about LeBron and AD. They gave you magnificent they games did. last they night. Did. It's about the cast of characters outside of those individuals and the ability to execute those details in so, the game plan. I guess my, my, where we're maybe missing each other a little bit, Jay, is you can play a perfect ball game. I just think Denver has enough discipline I agree to match you. said yeah, ball game. I agree with you. Th that's, look, they're the best team for a reason. Right. They're defending champs for a reason. Now, you heard LeBron James talking about the officiating afterwards. 
And, and we can show you, Cindy, if you have the tweet from D'Angelo Russell, because he's the one who got hit in the face, and they overturned it. Um, the, uh, the, the replay center winds up overturning the call, and D'Angelo Russell made no secret of his frustration at 1.47 a.m. Eastern time. He tweeted, that's a foul. We all saw it on national television. Now, when you have a 20-point lead and you wind up losing on, on a play that is officiated incorrectly in the third quarter. Very hard for me to say this decides on, the game. Man. Clearly it doesn't. Come but on, Legler, man. what are they doing? Come on. How in the world, is this, in what universe is this not a foul? I'm Marginal. with you. And I say the same thing about the Lowry DiVincenzo play in Marginal. the Sixers game. Marginal. I, I, I don't understand what, yep. listen, the problem with, the, with this is, for replay is, if, by the letter of the law, it's a foul. So when you look at the replay and there's contact to someone's face on an attempted layup, right, that is a foul. I don't know how you are not going to go in that direction that's what LeBron's saying the problem with LeBron's comments are had nothing to do with the fourth quarter comeback you're right and this is this is really about what's going on in the in the future right he's trying he's trying to plant that seed for now going forward in the series the problem is it's not like overall we thought the Lakers right last night got the short end of the stick in terms of the officiating nobody really feels that he's taking one specific call in the third quarter and the bottom line is no one really cares at that point when those comments are made after the game. Yeah, my, my, that tweet is embarrassing. It's like, and maybe I'm from the old school, the, there are no excuses, no mistakes. Yeah. I knew that when we were going into opposing gyms, we weren't going to the eight calls. It's, it's certain things, yeah. and it's not like that happened. But they made the call, Jay. They made, they blew the whistle. I, they overturned it in the replay center. It didn't happen in Denver. Like, I don't understand what they have a replay for. Look, you no, played in a much argue, more physical era. Arguing two right. different things. You played in a much, right? And that I, was yeah, a foul I, when I, you played. But, right? Greeny, I think we're talking about, yeah, is it a foul? Yes, I understand it's a foul. But, like, is it going to affect the overall outcome of the game? Did that happen in the last 20 seconds of no. the fourth quarter? Yeah. No, it happened in the third quarter. Oh, I see. So, like, the two. The two plays in the Philly game, yeah, they had bearing on the outcome of the game. Yes. Right, right. That's different. Right, the turnover. I, I couldn't believe they overruled that one when Lowry hit DiVincenzo on the back and dislodged that ball.